Hello everybody, and today on the bench we have a WPC CPU board. Uh, we see a lot of these, and it's the usual thing, it's had battery corrosion, so let me just switch over to manual focus, we'll get a better look at this. Right, so, we've got corrosion, all these chips here, all these resistors here, not so bad over here, these are probably cleaned up with the fiberglass brush, but these, this lot here needs replacing, these might have survived okay. Looks like we've also got a bit of corrosion, I you can see it, on the pins. So, horrible job, but we're going to replace this socket. It's not a particularly complicated job, it's just got so many pins, so it takes a while to do. Yeah, we'll do that first, and then we'll see what's up with the board. Right, let's have another closer look now we've removed these ICs. We can see there's some significant corrosion here underneath those chips. So they definitely needed to come off. Need to get this re-neutralized again, so I'll give it a second wash. Um, then we're going to be basically sanding down any corrosion areas. Make sure we get away any of the conformal coating that's, that's keeping the corrosion trapped underneath. Um, once that's done, we can retin everything, put some new conformal coating on, replace all the sockets. Um, I'm probably going to do these resistors here as well, I think. They've, these ones here, are, I'll just give them a clean up, these ones I'm going to replace. I think these, yeah, as I said before, I think these ICs are okay. This is the sort of main damage area right here. So we'll get this tidied up. Okay, so you can see we've removed all the components of interest. We've got the PLC socket off. We've removed all these corroded components. And what we've done is we've sanded it down uh, after re-neutralising it. And then we've replated everything with solder just to give it a coating to all those damaged areas. So what we do now is get all the flux off, desolder everything again, and that should leave a nice thin layer of tin plating on everything. Uh, same with the other side. Once we've got that fully cleaned up, we'll then start replacing components. Okay, and here we have the board fully populated now. All the bad ICs have been replaced, all the bad resistors have been replaced in the capacitors. And we've put some chips in as well. We'll see if the game boots up. Um, if it boots up, then we can proceed to test out this functionality here, which is mainly the switch matrix. Make sure none of that's been damaged. There may be some broken tracks from all the corrosion, so we need to check all that out. Okay, we're hooked up to the power on the bench. Let's fire it up and see if it boots. Oh, there we go. So it's booted and running. So the next thing to do is basically check the signals on the inputs, make sure they all look sensible. If they do, we can then check it out in a machine. Okay, so some initial probing has revealed a problem. So switch row 8 has nothing. Switch row 7, you can see it's held high as it should be. All the others are, so switch row 8 as we can see here, is the only one that's dead. So we need to check that one out. Okay, so switch row 8 was just a corroded trace, which we've now bridged with some LR1. And we can check that again. And that's now high as it should be, so it's now reconnected. Okay, so we've got another problem to look at, and that's most of the column drives are not working. So, one, two, three, four, Four is, five is, six, seven, eight. Well, not most. One, two, and three are dead, so we need to look at one, two, and three. So, with the switch drives, I found the connections to be in poor condition. There's some corrosion traps on here, so I've desoldered them, cleaned that up, retinned it, and put some new connectors on, and then jumper any wires required. So there we go, I've replaced the two connectors and it needed quite a bit of stitching there on the back to uh, fix the broken tracks. New connectors are on, and let's carry on testing. Right, checking both of the uh, drive connectors out, we've now got pulses on all but the first two, which are static. Let's show you the difference. So we've got a break around here somewhere on those two, let's check that out. Okay, and a couple more wire links later, and we're another step closer to the, fixing the destruction. Alright, so we're checking the switch matrix in the game, or is in obviously. Uh, and it looks like we've got rows 7 and 8 are dead. So let's just check that. So we've got middle red and bottom red. Let's check those out. So middle red, nothing. Bottom red, nothing. 
I've gone through and checked all the rest. Everything else seems to be working. On the dedicated switch is the back button. That does nothing. All the buttons and coin switches, start such as that's all working. So the dedicated switches all work apart from the back button. So we've got back button and row seven and eight to deal with. So although uh, rows seven and eight are correctly being tied high, um, when I ground the pins, the signal is not getting through to the comparator. So we've probably got a break or something faulty between the pins and the comparator. Right, so I found two breaks here. These were related to the back button not working and these two here were related to rows seven and eight. So hopefully that's now everything done. Let's go try it in the machine again. Okay, so we can see that the back button is now fixed. Um, but we've got an annoying problem. Now, this is down to the schematics for the WPC89 boards being wrong. So, I've unfortunately forgotten that they've actually swapped rows 7 and 8. So, if I press the middle target, we get... You can't see it. Left bank top. If I press the top one, we get left bank mid. I'm not sure how well we'd be able to see this. See if it will focus. Okay, so left bank middle and left bank top, they're on seven and eight, and they're reversed. So we've got seven and eight the wrong way around. So I need to swap the wires. Uh, and that should resolve the problem, but that's actually down to the schematics being wrong, and it actually has the wrong uh, wiring. So what I need to do is actually make a note on my schematics so I don't forget again. Here's an interesting little bug. Um, when it's initialised the code, it seems to give it unlimited uh, ball save. So it's just doing that forever. I'm going to try uh, doing another factory reset so we can clear that. Right, so now that I believe the work is complete, I'm just going to go through and test everything again. So we've got all the buttons. Um, start shifter. Bottom, middle and top, that's right now. This one, bottom, middle, top, same with this bank, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, and this last one, green, yellow, red. Hot bumpers. What else have we got? Uh, switch here, made ramp, got the opto on the loop. I can't really get into the multi ball ones, but let's go around here and see if I can get that hole. Jet hole. So, yeah, we've got pretty much every switch tested, so I've at least tested at least two or three from every row and every column. So, we now know that, that is fully working. Right, well, we've done all the switch testing, so let's stick it in a game and make sure everything's working properly. Oh, we want some credits. Yeah, I can't play this with uh, one hand on the camera. And we can see that after I've done a factory reset, it's actually uh, got rid of the unlimited ball save bug. So that's working fine. So as far as I can see, this looks to be functioning absolutely perfectly.